all the bacteria that were in the rumen, which is what I was working on. So what's the rumen? For the okay, so the rumen is, is the huge organ of digestion in a ruminant animal, the sheep and cattle. And it's, it's really a fermentation chamber. So, and it's only because of the microorganisms in there, the complex mix, that uh, cattle and sheep are able to digest grass and uh, forage and, and plant material. Otherwise, they starve. Um, and uh, so, so the microbiology of that system is utterly fascinating. And uh, the, the, the ruminant gets about 70% of its energy, or possibly even more, from the fermentation of plant material. Wow. Yeah. So, and, it, and it's just the whole setup. It's a very complex organ. It has four chambers. I won't go into detail, but it's all set up so that you get this, what they call a pre-gastric fermentation. And then... There's an acidic chamber in which the the bugs who've done the fermentation themselves get uh, broken down, and the protein is recovered from the bugs. So it gets wow. the energy from the plant material, <laughs> and then the the nitrogen supply from from the bu bugs that have done the digestion. Yeah. That's incredible. It is. It's a remarkable. So, so not only are the bugs extracting the energy from the grass, they're then getting consumed exactly. themselves uh, yeah. by yeah. other bugs. But well, by the, the lys there's a special lysosome, a cracking enzyme uh, that is produced by the animal. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, and it's 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 a unique. Uh, well, not there are a few other cases of it, but most lysosomes operate at fairly neutral pH. But the one in the ruminant is designed to operate at acidic pH because it's precisely got to crack open these these microbial cells, and then the animal absorbs the the breakdown product. Incredible. So yeah. so back then, what was known about the rumen? Well, actually, the rumen was one of the best researched uh, cases of, 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 of animal gut um, microbe symbiosis, the other one being the termite. So it had been worked on from the 50s, 1950s, by particularly Robert Hungate, who's wrote, written a classic book on it. Um, now, now long deceased, I'm afraid, but... Uh, so it it was a, it was a model system, but of course the the justification for spending public money on that area of research right. was <laughs> becoming a bit thin because we had milk lakes and butter mountains and all the rest of it, and um, so and because the research was mainly aimed at animal nutrition. I mean, I was taken on as a there were no geneticists at the Broward at that moment. I was taken on to, to perform miracles. So somebody thought I was going to be able to uh, engineer an organism in the room and it would massively improve productivity. Oh. Uh, yeah, so it was quite a challenge. So I started off doing, you know, um, gene transfer work for the first time, you know, isolating plasmids and, and, and transforming them into rumen bacteria, which was a real challenge. But, but I realized that, Ultimately, this wasn't going anywhere because, and in the end, of course, regulatory attitudes in Europe and Britain were not going to allow you to put an engineered bug in, even if you got the right yep. one. So, yep. so still I, a sticky, sticky topic. Uh, still a it? very sticky topic. Yes. So, so I, I fairly quickly decided what I was really interested in was how do these rumen organisms, you know, what allows them to be so efficient at breaking down plant material? Right. That was my my main interest. And I used my genetic molecular knowledge to, and it was hard work in those days, to make gene libraries, you know, get the DNA, make a gene library, look for the relevant genes that broke down cellulose, xylem, all these important molecules, um, and, and then sequence them. And, of course, sequencing in those days was all about huge acrylamide gels and radioactive phosphorus and one thing or another. So none of this was easy work. But we managed it, and, you know, we got into the field um, with a few other people in the world in the early 90s. Um, and actually, what I... I what, one of the things that, that uh, I managed to crack was... <laughs> The nature of the enzyme system um, that one of these bugs used was very similar to one that had been discovered in Clostridium, uh, non-rumen non bugs. And it is a thing called a cellulosome. And this is that all the enzymes involved in the breakdown of this plant uh, fiber are organized onto the cell surface in this one big complex. Right. And it's held together by little bits of glue called docrins and cohesins. Co sorry. 
And the guy who discovered this in the early 80s was a guy called Ed Baer, okay. uh, working in Israel. Now, when I published a short paper in 1997 suggesting that there was a cellular sum in this species, he immediately got on to me, uh, sent me a letter, because there was no email. And said, you weren't first, I was. Uh, no, no, no. He, well, no, no, he <laughs> said, by the way, <laughs> would you be interested in collaboration? Oh, okay. And that collaboration lasted, actually it's still going on in many ways, but wow. it lasted for the next 20 years and was wow. hugely productive. Amazing. So we showed the, the first case of a cellular serum in, in a gut organism, um, and it came to the point, obviously a decade or so later, where we had the genome sequence of one of these organisms. We were able to show that there was something like 220 uh, proteins in, produced by the genome that contributed to these complexes. Wow. We don't know what they all do. Still to this day? Still to this day. I mean, I'm not working on it anymore, but yeah. fascinating, mm. really. We will get to the microbial dark matter later, which was, <laughs> <laughs> which was yeah. in your book. Um, uh, but just, sorry, sorry, I don't want to yeah, spend yeah. the whole time on this, but just to round off, because it's a nice story, is we, we much later, we found a similar organism, actually it was a French group isolated it, in the human gut, which is one of the few uh, human gut bacteria that can break down cellulose. It also has a cellulosome. It's so, called Ruminococcus champolensis because it was isolated in France. Wow, love that. <laughs> <laughs> love and, that. And the very, and the very last point of interest in, on this story uh, is that I dis we, we found another organism, a Ruminococcus, in humans, which is one of the dominant species in humans that is the keystone species in breaking down resistant starch. Right. It makes a similar sort of complex, but it's devoted to starch breakdown. And we've called that the amylosome. And it, it, yeah. it, is your hypothesis that because we all evolved with bacteria on the planet before us, there are parallels between different species? Abs yes. Uh, well, across yes, across host species. So, and and the 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 final paper we published on this amylosome story, we looked at an Australian isolate from sheep right. <laughs> of Ruminococcus bromii. It has an almost identical am amylosome to the four human isolates that we've looked Fascinating. at. Fascinating. It's extraordinary. So, yes, I think these bugs... And the other thing about that organism, since we're talking about it, is it makes spores. And it, it's it's one of these gram-positive organisms used to be described as a non-sporing anaerobe. But, it, but, but it, no it's known. got the genes for spores, and boy, it makes spores. So this is, I think, how they manage to be so prevalent. And despite being very oxygen sensitive, they can transmit from host to host and even, even between species. Mm -hmm.